All right, so I'm going to pull up a, uh, an excerpt or two from the SEO and Beyond book. This is the one that I've got in the syllabus um, as a recommendation. It's not a requirement to, for you to get this book. Um, it's, you can get it either printed or digital. I got the, the digital one because then I can access it whenever I'm at. You see here, I'm, I'm reading it on my Kindle on the website. So if you get a Kindle book, you don't need a Kindle reader to read Kindle books. There's the Kindle app for iPhone, Android, etc. And you can read your Kindle books on the website. It's simply at read.amazon.com. So I have, I have a copy of the book. And I'm going to pull up a, a couple of pages here. A lot of what I talk about in this class is our versions of what this book talks about. And the thing is that this stuff always changes. So one book isn't always going to be the perfect answer. So let's see, I've got an item over here. It shows you, again, the concept that if there are quality pages linking to your site, that helps your ranking, that helps your authority. Um, it asks, well, if that's true, is the opposite true? Is it possible that a bunch of bad websites linking to your website could be negative? Yes. It's, uh, again, the uh, guilt by association. If this spam site is linking to that spam site, they both get lowered. But then if those are linking to yours, that could lower you as well. That's why it's so important, like I've got in my handout, go to your inbound links report, look at what's good, what's bad, and if you have any bad links, deal with them as soon as possible. Go through the disavow process. It's right there in, at the end of the handout. Bad backlinks. So it says what types of backlinks first and foremost go for quality, not quantity. So it's better to have two links from reputable websites than 20 from not so reputable websites. To be seen as a real authority, your site needs incoming links from other authority sites. And it says the latest update, uh, automated link building tools are not recommended. So this again there's been so many techniques for SEO one of the techniques was you could buy software or pay for services that created a lot of links back to your site and at one point that was a gray hat technique and now it's more of a black hat technique remember white hat black hat gray hat white hat techniques are the good techniques that the search engines want you to do like everything we've been talking about in class Black hat techniques are the bad ones, the spam techniques, the cheating techniques. And gray hat is somewhere in the middle, that perhaps they haven't quite fully been deactivated or fallen out of favor, that are still gaming the system. So when Google and Bing said, okay, we're going to start to count links pointing to your site, the spammer said, great, we'll write software to create a hundred links to my site and game the system. And we'll sell that software to unsuspecting people that want more links. Now, a few years ago, when I was first teaching this class, there would be a person that would come to my class every semester I taught it, and I would hear him during breaks talk to his classmates and say, hey, I, I know this software, really affordable, $50, that'll, buy, that'll create all of these links to your site. You want in on the ground floor. So he was in here selling that bad stuff. Uh, and after he talked to the person, I would then talk to them later and say, I don't recommend you do that. So if anyone comes to you and then opens their their trench coat says, hey, you want to buy some links? <laughs> Don't go for it, because that's black hat nowadays. It's not good to artificially buy these links. To some degree, it's also not so good for you to go to GoDaddy and buy victor.com, victor.net, victor.biz, and link them all together. Now, that's not horrible, like what this is, but it's not so good anymore because What's the difference between all of those sites? If victor.com and victor.org and victor.biz all have the exact same content, 
you're not helping yourself. It's the same content. Duplicate content doesn't help you. Let me write that down here. Duplicate content does not help you. That means you have two different websites with the same page. Yeah, exactly. So if I've got victor.com and victor.org, but they both have the same thing, same pictures, same text, everything's the same, doesn't help you. It's duplicate content. Avoid multiple websites of yours with the same content. That was a technique that used to work, that I'm going to buy all of those names and put a website on all of them and link them all together. The search engines would see those links and it would help you. Now they're smarter. It doesn't help you. What's okay is that if I buy victor.com, .org, .biz, and all of that, and point them all to one address, that is, if someone types victor.org, it automatically goes to .com. That's okay. If I buy victor.biz, someone goes to that address, and it automatically goes to victor.com. That's okay. If you had a complete website at .org and .com and .biz, but it was all the same thing, that's not good. And also um, about duplicate content. Is any of your content, like blog posts, on someone else's site? I write an article on my financial website. And I write the same article on a different financial website. Uh, that may or may not help you because it's duplicate content. If that other site is getting that traffic with your blog post, it's going to have the preference over yours. Um, the traffic to the other site, the search engine will see that other site with more traffic is the legitimate originator of that blog post and now this other website has the same blog post is this a copy is this spam was it stolen again the search engines have to be guilty by associate uh, guilty until proven innocent so if you're writing if you're contributing articles to different sites it might not help you spammers do that a spammer is going to sell a package of 1000 articles to as many people as possible and if i paid forty dollars to buy five hundred articles, so did someone else. And that article is going to be exactly the same on my site and someone else's site. And the search engine will see spam. And it's not going to help you. So when we take the, if you take the blogging class, we're going to take some time in there to brainstorm and think of ideas for everyone in class. Original content for everyone. You don't want to go buy pre-made articles. And you don't, you're not going to be safe by buying that article and just changing the first paragraph. The search engine can analyze an article in half of a half of a second. And it can do that for all of the articles it finds all over the world. In seconds. Every time I do a Google search, it says, I found two million results in a quarter of a second. So the search engine can easily analyze a website in seconds and see that seven of those ten paragraphs are the same as this other website. Spam. And the search engines will label you as a spammer faster than as a good site. So this is just saying, don't create dummy links, don't create fake websites and link them all together. Um, it says, if I cannot use automated link building tools, how can I get enough links? To answer the question, let's ask it this way. Do you believe your page deserves to rank well based on the quality of the content and the authority of your site? The reason that Wikipedia is often the top result of any search is because it's one of the best resources of information. It's all of these articles written by a variety of people with a lot of experience and, and uh, expertise on a topic. So if I look up web design, most likely the first result is Wikipedia. If I look up Wheat La Coche, the first result is Wikipedia. The second result was our client. But does, it, does your stuff deserve to rank higher?
again, these are just excerpts you need to read yourself, but what I'm going to do is jump over to... I'm sure you're concerned about building incoming links. What's the best way? Um, the best backlinks are the, that you can get to your site are the ones you did not create. These are backlinks from other sites where you did not request the link, nor did you have any say in, in, in crafting it. Those are the holy grails of backlinks. They're also the most difficult. The best way to get that type of backlink is to develop content that your visitors love and want to share. Develop content on your site that others' owners will want to link to. So again, it's content. It's a short answer. For example, blogging. It's about uh, creating content that people want to share and link to. And I'll show some examples right here. Infographics. So this is ideas for content. Infographics. These are graphical representations of boring info. It's better to show an example than try to define it. Check this out. Go to the website pinterest.com slash m-o-s-h-e-r 13, Mosher 13. This is the Pinterest account of one of my colleagues. He was a former student. Now he's a web designer, has his own company. He uses social media. He uses Pinterest. He's doing really well on Pinterest. Let's check out his Pinterest profile for a moment. Pinterest.com slash Mosher 13. What you'll see there is he's got 33,000 followers on Pinterest. He's a regular person. He's not a big budget company that paid for followers or anything like that. He was a student of mine, but he's doing really well on Pinterest. He's using Pinterest to reach an audience. The short answer of why does Pinterest or any social network matter is because it's a captive audience. 33,000 people are paying attention to him on Pinterest. If he posts something on Pinterest, potentially 33,000 people see it. It doesn't mean that 33,000 people are going to click the link or buy the product or email him or whatever. But if you take 1% of 33,000, I think it's 3,000, right? 3,000 results, even 1% of all of those followers could be a good result. So if I've got a hundred followers, what's one percent of a hundred? One. One person bought your product. One person emailed you. One person called you. So that's why in social media we want to get more followers. It's not just an ego thing. We want to get more followers because it's a captive audience. Easier said than done, of course. But notice Chuck uses Pinterest to share different pins, different posts on all of these different topics. One of the topics is infographics. He has shared... Now, Pinterest is, is really annoying nowadays. You have to log in if you really want to see anything. But one of the, uh, one of the collection of things that he shares is infographics, 2,000 infographics. He didn't create them all. He created very few of them, but he's sharing all of these infographics. He's reaching an audience that cares about an infographic. An infographic is, if it will let me show it, is, um, you know, a graphical representation of, a, of some sort of a topic. Can I ask about pinning something in copyright? That's a big discussion. Uh, short answer is, and I'm not a lawyer, but it's okay. Short answer. Long answer is a long answer. Because um, social media, the point of it is to be able to share content. And if something gets pinned on Pinterest, the person most likely that originally pinned it wanted it to be shared. 
Now, of course, there are going to be some that didn't want their stuff to be shared. And I have to unfortunately say, if you don't want it to be shared on social media, don't put it online. Unfortunately, you have to do a little bit, be negative that way, that if you didn't want your picture to be stolen, you shouldn't have put it online. And I know that's a very blame the victim sort of answer, but that's the nature of modern internet. That if you don't want that picture to get out there, to spread out there, don't put it online. It's so easy to copy. I deleted my copy of it, but someone copied it, and the copy of the copy lives on. So, but that's sort of not the route, the best way to answer that question, because people want their stuff, usually, to be shared. If I'm a business, I want my picture of my cake to be shared, free advertising. If I wrote that article, I want that article to be shared on Twitter, free advertising. If I have something on mine that I want more, more people to find, I'm going to put it on Pinterest, and I'm okay that 40 people steal it on Pinterest. If I put my picture up there with why, my watermark, my logo, etc., it's okay that it ended up in someone else's pinboard half a world away. It's giving me more free advertising. Again, the long answer still is longer than that. The short answer is... If I'm sharing this blog post, I want more people to see it, so I do want it to get pinned. Pinning someone else's stuff? You often want to share stuff that you create. That's the best way to be safe about all those copyrights. But again, the ultimate hot dog style guide. Whoever created this probably wanted this to be shared. They're a hot dog company. They want to sell hot dogs. And so they're okay with that being shared all over the web to get viral, to get famous. If they didn't want that to be shared, they shouldn't have put it online. Now that, of course, that kind of thinking doesn't apply for anything else. But for social media, um, it's okay. So I can't exactly show what Pinterest is going to keep bothering me until I, line, until I log in. But you can kind of see behind the scenes here. These infographics, instead of showing a boring PowerPoint, 10 ways to convert more customers, there's a cool drawing with <coughs> colors and design and all of that. You've probably seen them, maybe you didn't know what they were, but you saw an infographic, 25 ways teachers can integrate social media into education. That could have been a very boring article. Instead, it's a little bit more of an interesting looking visual graphic, an infographic, an informative graphic, infographic. The book is recommending ways for you to create content for people to share, such as an infographic. Infographics take more work to create. But guess what? You can do a search for infographic template. 15 free infographic templates. Now, you searched it, and so did 100 other people. But but this is one possibility, creating content that people want to share. I create this infographic on Victor's Bakery. Let's say I want to make a graphic about the top five alternatives to sugar. And I have a little bit of Photoshop skills, so I'll make a simple graphic that shows why um, Stevia is better, and then a little chart here that has the date um, uh, monk fruit was first used in China in 200 AD, whatever. I'm making a graphic out of boring information. Then I share it on my Twitter, I share it on my Facebook, I share it on my Instagram. Someone likes it, it gets picked up, it goes viral, hopefully. Free advertising, because I created a graphic that has my company logo in the corner, a link back to my website. You see right here? Again, this is all stealth advertising. It's not just giving away something for the fun of it or for the niceness of it. Underlying, MediaWorks wants links back to their website to sell something. Products, goods, or services. And they're going to give away a free information here. Right here designed by whatever that company is. So I want that to get spread out if I properly set it up. So infographics, 
Number two, I'm going to skip this one. This is too technical. Don't worry about it. Number three, forums. Here's an example. Forums. Ideas for content. Forums. Be active on a forum about your topic. If I'm a bakery, I'm going to go find websites where people are talking and writing about baked goods, about food, about baking, about baking with kids. I'm going to go find websites where people are talking about that. And I'm going to join the forum. And I'm going to add to it. I'm going to post something to the forum. I'm not going to spam the forum. I'm going to add something positive to it. A picture, a link. I'm going to join the conversation positively. That'll be a link back to my website. Um, that's a back link. That takes the effort of simply not going to the forum and writing me too, or I agree, or good job, because the forum moderators could delete your comment. If these forums are being run well, someone is there spending their time reading all the, the posts and deleting the spam, deleting the off-topic ones or the, or, the, or the bad ones. So that could be more trouble than it's worth. You're trying to contribute and they keep deleting your posts because it's too, it's too adverti advertising, advertorial. free downloads, like software PDFs. This is related to the infographic, but we can say here free downloads, such as free photos, free music, free PDFs, free PowerPoints. What can you give away to people visiting your site? Maybe I shoot a few photos and I give them away for free, stock photos. I put them on my website, I make a page called Free Photos. People visit there, people love free stuff. They have your photo, your watermark, your website is going to be in the corner. People take it, download it, use it on their site. Your address is there, free advertising. Free music takes much more effort, of course. Free PowerPoints or PDFs. Like an infographic, I can make maybe a five-page PowerPoint uh, if I'm a realtor, the top five mistakes to avoid when buying your first house. And I can write a simple paragraph for each one of those five points. Give it away for free on my free page. Or I can write an article and uh, a condensed version of the article, blog post, and have a link at the bottom. Don't forget to download our full PDF about that. The whole point of all of this is to create content that the search engines can find, but what if some other website is also a realty website? And they want to write an article like how what you've written, and they write a variation of it, and they reference you in their link, in their, in their article, with a link back to your site. Backlink. I never asked them to link to me, but I created content that they found that then they link back to, and the search engines see that and help rank you. Posts that include links. So here is, you know, blog posts, blogs about lists, top 5x, top 3y, bottom 7 Z, whatever. Any number it doesn't matter. Top 5, top 10, 12, 47, doesn't matter any number at all. Um, some article that you're writing with some of your expertise, remember, authority and content, you're using your expertise on a topic, you're writing an article, you're writing multiple articles. If you take the blog class, we talk in there that you should be blogging on a regular basis, once a month, for example. Once a month, we're going to write a new article about a particular topic. Let me show you an example here. This is one I just wrote for a client the other day. One of my hobbies is reading and collecting comic books. And as luck would have it, 
I just got uh, hired to work for a comic book company. So uh, this particular client, rsc-online.com, um, there's these blog posts on different topics. Uh, these again are keywords people could be sh searching for. There's an article here about the top five female-friendly comics from Marvel. So there's so many different comics nowadays. There's a lot of Sometimes people think, well, these are just comics for, for, for boys, but there's comics for everyone. So here's one about five female-friendly, female-focused comic books. And uh, it's a top five list. You, you, read, you read the article. It's digestible chunks. I want to read number one right away. Uh, they jump to number one. They read that. Each of these has then sharing links. That's what this is about as well here. Social media sharing. Make it easy for people to share. You're going to create this content and you're going to set it up so that people can easily share it. This has been shared twice over to Facebook, so reaching more people. Friends of friends. Yes? So um, those pictures were pictures from the comic book, right? Mm -hmm. So it, can you share an, a copyrighted image the way you can share copyrighted text if you're sharing a small portion? I forget what it's called. There's a legal term. Fair word. use. Fair use. So, so fair use text, fair use of an image? Yeah, and again, it's it's a big topic that I'm not a lawyer of, but fair use is a valuable thing, which is that if you use someone else's work for commentary and critique and such, that protects you to some degree. So that's what this, these articles here. Obviously, this comic book company does not own any of this, these comics, but this comic book store sells these comics, and so we're giving free advertising to Marvel Comics. They want that. And anyway, this is under fair use as well. It's a, it's a portion of the picture. This text is original text, yes. But this picture is right off the Marvel website. But it's for fair use because of critique and commentary, so it's okay to use it. So that's what this is saying here, posts about lists. Top five, top three, doesn't matter how many. Article marketing, um, we'll touch on that one. Forum, we just mentioned that one. YouTube and other video sites. Ideas for content, video. That's a big topic. That's why if you take the social media class, we spent two days on YouTube. We need to create a video and we need to share it to YouTube. And YouTube in and of itself, we have to do SEO in YouTube as well. I don't know what the statistic is, but it's a crazy statistic like every minute people upload a hundred hours of YouTube videos. It's a huge number. So lots of stuff is getting uploaded to YouTube. You might say, well, how is YouTube going to help my bakery? If you take the social media class, we go into detail. But in there I talk about how, what if you create short 30 second videos about your products? showing off your product. You're talking about your product, you're recording it very easily with your mobile device, just talking about it and uploading it to YouTube. Not a lot of effort, and it could result in traffic, views and hits and all of that. It could go viral. Maybe you accidentally made a mistake and it was funny and then it went viral. Did anyone hear about Chewbacca Mom recently? If you haven't, this was a lady that bought a, a mask of Chewbacca from Star Wars and she recorded herself simply putting it on. And it was so funny to her, it made her laugh, and her, and her video went viral. She went on the Today Show. She met uh, Peter Mayhew, the original Chewbacca. She's getting an action figure made of her. It went totally viral. You don't know what's going to go viral. We've done videos for our clients on some that we think we've spent so much time and effort, this is going to go viral, it's going to go perfect. And it's got 100 views. Then another video that it was just off the cuff recording it, shaky cam, and it got 1,000 views. 
you don't know what's going to be a hit, especially with video, unless you try it. And the barriers to entry are actually really low. You don't need a big expensive camera. You don't need uh, a video editing software. You can record straight off your phone and upload it. It won't be as polished and such as some of these other videos you see, but to learn about that polish, take that class. I'm going to talk about getting these video clips and putting them together with music and editing and all of that good stuff. But this is a big topic here. Question? No? Well, I, I guess I should wait for the class. I'm just wondering if there's maybe a, a bias towards the unprofessional video these days where maybe people trust them more. No, it's going to depend on your on your target audience. Some members of your target audience are going to gravitate more toward the slice of life, off the cuff, amateur types of videos. And perhaps your target audience, though, will not find that legitimate and will see it as amateur and not like it. You don't know. That's why I would be trying to create different types of videos. I'm going to look at all my stats in YouTube and see this one got a lot of views and this one didn't, probably because of the content and the quality of the video. With video, we have pre-made videos and we have uh, live videos. These are, for example, YouTube, Vimeo, live videos is Periscope, um, blab.io. There's lots of them. What these are is the pre-made video is that you record your video and and then upload it. You record your video and then maybe edit it and polish it and then upload it. It's done. You upload it. The newer generation of all of this is the live video, the streaming video. There's an app, Periscope. You turn on Periscope and it's live. All your followers see you at that moment. You have like a TV channel broadcasting live. Periscope Lab, there's a bunch of them out there. Facebook has one now. That's how Chewbacca Mom got famous. She turned on her Facebook Live app. Uh, YouTube saw the writing on the wall and now YouTube has a live broadcasting feature as well. So that's the most amateur way there. You cannot record the video and put music onto it and stuff after the fact. It's live at that moment, warts and all. That's becoming more popular. One of the most popular live things on the internet right now are people playing video games. Uh, someone turning on their recorder to their TV and they're just playing a video game and they're talking to the audience and that gets thousands of views, thousands of followers. Just some, I want to watch someone play a video game. I can go buy it and play it myself, but I'd rather watch someone else. Believe it or not, that's very, very popular. So again, content. I made a viral video and it took off. And I also got traffic to my website because of it. Because in my video, I also mentioned at the end, and don't forget to visit our website, victor.com. As easy as that. I don't have to go in and add the text of my website on the video. I could say it in the video. What's content to get me traffic? to give me backlinks, to create this feedback loop, traffic beats tra traffic, breeds traffic, um, and then that uh, gets you higher rankings. And then they go on to say, of course you want to use Twitter, Facebook, all of those social media, you want to write blogs, RSS feeds, don't worry about that, site directory is not, don't worry. So those are some excerpts, guest blogging, write articles on someone else's website. Let me show you an example of that. If you go to investorjunkie.com, if you don't know anything about investing, here's one website to get educated on it. There are free articles about investing. Most of these articles are guest written. So I'm just going to jump in and select whatever here. Five simple steps to creating proper asset allocation. This was written by Kevin Mercadante. I go look at another article, it was a different author. The point of guest blogging is Kevin has a page on Investor Junkie with all of his links, backlinks. He went on to their site, wrote some free articles for them, 
he might have gotten paid, he might have done it for free. But what he gets out of it is, on his profile here, he's got links back to his own website and his YouTube and his Twitter and everything. So that's, um, those are some ideas. For content, I can give you the general idea, but what do you create for your particular company? I can't teach that. Everyone's company is different. And again, I can't give everything out of that book. You you should uh, check it out yourself. Lots of stuff to read about there. But any questions on these things that we've been talking about? OK. Uh, let's take one last break. When we come back, we will do a few more things. I won't uh, kick you out this time, so you can stay if you'd like.